All right, everybody, what's good with you? It is your boy, BQ. Oh, this is the Negative BQ YouTube channel. This is your Impact Lounge, Impact Wrestling Review for what's the date on this one? August 22nd, 2024. This is the number two place to be for the Impact fan. Yes, I, I have actually conceded to Mike Gilbert. I'm probably closer to the end of this thing. Uh, and I don't know what that means. That doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to be done in a month. but. Uh, I do got to put over Mike. I always name drop Mike at some point throughout my podcast. But if you don't check out the, uh, or if you haven't sub subscribed to the Mike and JD YouTube channel, and uh, even get involved with his Patreon, he is uh, he is covering TNA in depth to the point that I never would, could, or even would want to. In all honesty, I mean, he's talking ticket sales and locations and TV and all this shit and. Uh, you know, I'm I'm really to the point that I'm just kind of covering the show, and I uh, there was one point where I really prided myself on the news and the interviews and things like that, and I'm just I'm just not there anymore. You know, we're just kind of talking the TV show, and uh, so I got I got to put Mike over. If you if you really a lot of you guys like to get really in depth with a lot of things, like he knows the names of the everyone backstage and all that shit, uh, just stuff that I don't care about. You know, because I just uh, I really more enjoy watching the show. I still keep an eye on what they do from a marketing and promotion standpoint, but I just kind of enjoy the show. And, you know, I've said before that wrestling is a really small part of my day. And that doesn't mean uh, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody when I say something like that, because I know there's some people that talk wrestling the entire day. That isn't what I'm saying at all. It's just like for me and my own personal life and what I go, I got go, excuse me, what I got going on. It's just a small part of my day. Um, I talk a little wrestling with people on social media. I'm a, I'm a part of some groups, but it, it's it's a really small part of my day. I just don't um, I don't go in depth like I used to, you know. So I would definitely recommend um, checking Mike out. So probably be doing this much longer than I ultimately do. And uh, yeah, I, I've conceded. This is the number number two place to be for the Impact fan. TNA fan. I'm still going to call it Impact. That that is one of the hardest things for me to uh to to change. Anyway, um man, before we get into this episode, I know there was some news that came out about Rich Swan. And uh I I say quite often when he's on screen that he's one of my favorite guys. He's one of the only small wrestlers that I like in wrestling uh, just because I'm someone who likes to watch some some guys with a little bit of size to them. Uh, but I've always been a Rich Swan guy, and there's been stuff that I've that I've known for a while about Rich Swan, like kind of, you know, kind of off the record stuff that I, I can't get into a repeat. But he's he's been going through stuff for a while. That, that's that's all I'm going to say, you know. And I think it's starting to come to to light here a little bit, and kind of, you know, I guess what was told to me by a very impartial party, someone who wants best for both of them. Because I know there's a Rich Swan has a friend tweeting out, oh, she's cheating on him. She's doing this and this. What, what was told to me by a very impartial party, again, that, that wants what's best for both of them, is that, uh, well, first of all, the issues aren't really our business, but the wrestling media has made it our business. <laughs> that it. The issues are Rich Swan's fault, you know. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is because because Sue Young does have a uh, what are they called a GoFundMe out there because she's <clears throat> unable to compete, unable to travel right now. And uh, I know there's some people that probably look at it. Excuse me, let me cough again. <clears throat> I'm not feeling well. I'm gonna pause this to really cough this thing. I apologize for that. I should have prefaced at the beginning of this thing. I'm not. I'm not feeling well at all today. Um, but I know she has the GoFundMe out there, and then you've got this guy saying, "Oh, she's trying to babyface the fans out of money." I, I guess really, and I'm putting it into my own words, is I believe Sue Young's side of the story. You know, when it when it comes to that kind of stuff, that um. Rich is seeking the help that he needs, and that's awesome. I think we want that for him. We want him to get better. 
I think it says a lot that he's being suspended and not being just fired, released from his contract. I think that says a lot. Um, I think they want to be there for him. The company wants to be there for him. They they want to be there for both of them. So if you're considering, I, I only say that because if you're considering donating for Sue Young and you were kind of on the fence about it because it's like, well, it looks like she's putting Rich Swan through the ringer. Donate. Donate to Sue. All right. I'll put it like that. So uh, I'm not going to get into depth much further other than because um, that's just all wrestle gossip. Um, other than we want to see him get better um, and and good thing that he's taken the necessary steps. But he's definitely going through it. Rich Swan is definitely going through that. So you so be there for him too. We want to be there for uh, for both of these individuals from the TNA wrestling family. So let's get into this episode here. These sons of bitches put on another pretty good show. This uh, this Tampa tapings is it, y'all. Great episodes, great environment. The show looks really, really good. You know, I was watching it, and I'm like, man, this this isn't far off from like watching an episode of Dynamite. What have, I, I've always said, they have to look closer to you know, NXT or Dynamite, then MLW, NWA, whatever. Well, NWA doesn't look that bad. But to me, nice full crowd. We could see him. It was lit up. Like, this looked like a big, big-time wrestling company, you know? So I, I've really um, I've really enjoyed these tapings. There's there's a few matches that I'm kind of like, oh, man, these are a little long or, or whatever for, for my taste. Um, But they've done a very good job here, and I hope that this is the place that they continue to come back to. Because uh, they're they're doing a they're doing an excellent job. We kick off. Tom Hannafin lets us know we're set for another qualifying match, and it's Hammerstone versus Frankie Kazarian versus Kushida. So you got three pretty big names here, and um, I'm kind of glad that this Ultimate X is for the championship and not a number one contenders ultimate X. The reason I say that is because every time there's a number one contenders ultimate X, it's seen, and this, I shouldn't say every time that's a very strong word, but let's say over the last two years, maybe three, the person wins the ultimate X, the number one contender, they cash in like a week later. It's a throwaway match. And it's like, they go through all this just to wrestle and lose. Because I can't even think the last time someone cashed in an X and won. I'm sure there's one or two um, over the last several years. I think the Machine Guns, I think that's how they won their tag team titles. But I'm talking from like an Ultimate X standpoint. I mean, excuse me, an X Division standpoint. <clears throat> um, I can't remember the last time it happened. I'm sure there is someone. But for the most part, the number one contenders don't win. So I'm kind of glad this is for the championship. We know Mike Bailey is going to win this thing. I mean, that's not even a question but uh i think they've done a pretty good job in the build up to it so i was pretty sure hammerstone was going to win this thing even though they've really really teased hey frankie kazarian and hammerstone both want to be in this ultimate x kashida was not going to win we knew he was not going to win um I, you know i make a lot of predictions i'm very rarely correct but i think there's a probability that Frankie Kazarian, and I hate run-ins and, and all that shit, but I think there's a high probability Frankie Kazarian uh, costs Nick Nemeth the championship in the uh, Iron Man match because Frankie Kazarian's like, I want a title shot. These fighting champions are fighting everybody. Frankie's the one that was down to the last two at Slammiversary. And Telegraph and Tom, two weeks, two, three weeks ago, said, doesn't Frankie Kazarian know that you can't just that you have to earn a title shot here in TNA? And I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers are just all th between Jordan Grace, uh, Mike Bailey, fucking Nick. Now they're just wrestling people. They're wrestling anyone who wants a title shot. So I I do think there's something more to it that they're going their way out of their way and not, not give them a title shot. And um, I know. I know Mike thinks this Frankie Xarian and uh, Joe Hendry thing is going to happen. I, I think they're going to kind of continue to go Frankie and Nick Nemeth. 
but I think Frankie's going to cost him the title for not putting on putting it on the line versus him. And I think that's the direction they're going to go for Bound for Glory. But yeah, Hammerstone wins this thing. Tom reminds us that it's not about weight limits. It's no limits. I think that I've always thought that was very stupid. I'm going to be totally honest with you. It's a fucking cruiserweight division, and it should be. But it's fine. Um, Hammerstone is going to be in this thing. The match was good. The match was of appropriate length featuring guys who can work. Jim Miller inter- interviews Eric Young here. <clears throat> and as I've said, these backstage segments are kind of going back to looking bad again. Um, there's, excuse me, Matt. I'm going to try not to cough through this whole podcast. I know that's going to get very, very annoying for you guys. But they're, they're back. Uh, Eric Young is back. They have nothing for Eric Young. They're just kind of like shoehorning him into stories and he's back there and he's talking another person they have absolutely nothing to do or they have absolutely nothing for steve for the land of the free. and uh they both look like floating heads back there i've talked to tna about some of the production quality stuff so some of scott demore's people are still there that's why a couple of weeks ago, Montreal, it's the piss yellow filter. It's why some of the stuff backstage here is still really dark. A lot of Scott's people are still in place. And uh, they ultimately will get away from that. But it's still, uh, the production quality is going to be up and down, unfortunately, which kind of bothers me. But they're, they're going to kind of do this, I guess, uh, Eric Young versus uh, Steve Macklin thing. They're just, it is like, hey, we have nothing for either of these guys, so let's just find something for them. Santana does one of his nice ba- nice uh, backstage promos after this. They're always very authentic, very good. Um, We're getting, then we get Alicia Edwards versus Rose Mary. So I'm always giving, you know, Tom Hannafin his, I'm a kick out. I talk about it every week. So there's another version of it that he does. He does and I kick out, and then he does. Oh, what a kick out. Oh, what where a he's kick out. where he is. Oh, you know, like he oh oh like he's surprised. He's caught off guard that they actually kicked out of the the, the move. He oh and it kicked out like five or six times throughout this match. I'm like, bro. Seriously, you don't think that some of the shit moves that they were doing were gonna end the match. Like, you hit some shit forearm, go for the pin, and this guy's, oh, you know, completely caught off guard that there was a kick out. Uh, Spitfire did a run in here because Masha Slamovich got got uh, involved. And this is like when it's so phony to me. Masha, Masha gets involved for like two seconds. Spitfire runs out immediately. It's not like... Masha was causing issues the entire match, and then these bitches, um, excuse, excuse me, then these chicks run out and get involved. That isn't what happened here. They just ran out immediately. It's all scripted as shit. Um, Alicia hits the flatliner, which is the best one. It's one of her finishers. Well, it's her indie finisher. It's probably the best one I've ever seen her hit. And uh, she went for the cover on Rosemary. But uh, the referee was distracted, and she hit Rosemary. Ended up hitting the as above, so below. So I thought this was fine. I think Alicia's Edward, Alicia Edwards' work when she has a reason to be out there is a lot better than when she was spending years as a jobber. Because um, what can you really show when that's your role? Ash by <coughs> fuck me in the ass. Ash by awful sauce is backstage with the personal concierge and uh, they're challenging Jordan Grace to a match by elegance. We don't know what that's going to be. Uh, Ash is talking a little bit more. It's not so dominated by the personal concierge, which is something I told you guys they were probably going to go that direction. I don't know what this match by elegance is. Nobody does, but this is going to be a major turning point in this division 
maybe a turning point is not the best way of saying it, but it's going to either Ash is going to win the title here and she's going to be a character that uh, gets actual heat and becomes the person they signed, the person they envisioned. Or she's going to become, or she's going to keep giving us comedy, and we're never going to get away from it. I don't think they would take the title off Jordan Grace here. But again, like, how many times is Ash going to wrestle for the belt? So I don't know if we're even going to get a clean finish here because they kind of tease like there might be a three way with, with, with Rosemary coming and all that. So I don't know. I think that there's a, there's a high probability. This is TNA booking. A lot of it's booking one on one. I think there's a high probability that Rosemary gets involved in this, just like Ash got involved in her match, and that kind of builds the ultimate, uh, ultimately builds a three way match. I don't think we're going to get a clean finish here, but I do think it's a, a really important match for Ash, and I think it's a very important match for the division. I really do. Then we get a six man tag, six man mixed tag. This is Zaya Brookside, Rhino, and everybody's favorite PCO. <laughs> Smells like Bigfoot's dick. And they took on Matt Cardone was supposed to be in this match. Um, Steph Delander was in it with her surprise partners of Big Con and Madman, and the and Big Con comes out and. and the commentary is fake surprised, fake impressed. And uh, then Madman Fulton comes out. The way he came out, he came out doing the head, the head thing. And you just see some random dude. It, it was not ceremonious the way that, <laughs> that he came out. And at first I said, yo, if this is a stable of <clears throat> Matt Cardona, Big Con and Madman Man Full, and I can get behind this. You know? By the end of the match, I said, I don't think this is a stable. I just think they brought Madman Fulton on. And this match was very ridiculous. I thought Zaya Brookside did a very good job in it. Um, but these, I mean, it's people, the Human Fire, Hytrit, Rhino, uh, PCO, you know, guys that I don't really care about. And what I don't understand here is that, excuse me, I don't really understand why PCO's team won the match because it just seems like it's always about feel good moments for PCO. I, th I, you know, Matt Cardone got some heat on PCO at the honeymoon and I know they're going to continue to build this thing into Matt Cardona versus PCO. But if you're going to do that, then let Matt Cardona's team win the match. Like continue to build heat. What, why do, why would they even fight at this point? It's like they got their comeuppance. They won the match. Granted Cardona wasn't in it, but they won. Where's the heat? The heat is completely gone. So th that's the kind of issue I had with it. Uh, Tom Hannafin said, last week Santino offered Cardona a contract. Uh, the, one, the, the, the one part about this match I did like is when Khan was, uh, man, well, who was he working on? Rhino. And he was telling Steph Delander, ask him if he's okay again. Ask him if he's okay again. And then she, then he goes, or she goes, "Are you okay?" And then Khan drops the leg. I thought that was the most personality Khan has shown, and I thought that was a really nice little touch in the match. So again, I wasn't a fan of this team losing. I wasn't a fan of Mo Madman Fulton taking the pin. I wasn't a fan of Madman Fulton taking a Brooksy bomb. But that's my opinion. Where's the heat? The heat is gone. Now, if Cardona would have found a way for uh, his team to win, then you continue to build off it. But, you know, instead, it's another feel-good moment for PCO. Uh, 
it's a comedy match. To me, there's no heat going forward. They did a very well done Josh and Nick video package. I told you guys last week, I was not watching a 30 minute wrestling match. It's just, I, it's just not going to happen. Your boy is not watching the same two people for 30 straight minutes. Your boy is not watching the same two people for 60. I'm going to let you know that right now. When we, uh, when I uh, review Emergence, and when I watch Emergence, I'm going to get up to that match. I'm going to fast forward to the end, and I'm going to see who wins. I will make sure to listen to a review or two to get the gist of what happened in the match. But if you think, and you guys, many of you guys will watch this no problem. There is nothing wrong with that. I am just not, your boy is not watching uh, two, uh, and, uh, 60 minutes straight of two guys wrestling. It's, it's not happening. We get a Jordan Grace backstage vignette without music. Wow. You know, usually these little vignettes, the way that she was positioned, there would be some kind of cheesy music. Uh, it wasn't. I called this next match last week the jobber three-way. And um, this one very, very much surprised me. It very much impressed me. And it was the number one contender to the Digital Media Championship, Laredo Kid, versus Jay Vidal and Boopy, a.k.a. the Googe. So when they put out this match graphic, I said, okay, how are you going to have Hammerstone versus Kazarian versus, uh, who's the other, Kushida, and then you have this match. I was like, something is not right here. But these three put on a much more entertaining match than I was prepared for. I had no clue Jay Vidal was still in the company. There was a misstep slash botch that uh, Jay Vidal was supposed to springboard himself off the gouge and take out Laredo Kid. I saw this on social media. They were able to cover it up pretty well on TV, but it was pretty pretty gross on social media. Uh, I, I had to laugh because Laredo Kid clearly went to go check on him after, after he took a spill. So you got the baby face checking on the heel. Jay Vidal, I hope they find something I shouldn't say find something for him to do. I, I can't picture him in storylines with anyone, but I, I hope they find more for him to do as far as getting out there and wrestling. He's very authentic in what he is. You know, he doesn't have to do bad comedy. He doesn't have to be over the top. He's just himself, which is over the top. So it's it's natural. I thought he, um, in the beginning, when they were going to reach out and grab each other's hands and then he didn't want to touch them, I thought that was a really nice touch, uh, and it fit his character. So uh, I hope they find a little bit more for him to do. But this was, this was I thought the best match of the show. Honestly, this uh, this uh, this kind of surprised me. And uh, Rado Kid wins with the four fifty splash, and it was so funny because he starts going to the top rope, and Matt Raywall is like. He's not wasting any time. That wasn't a Matt Raywall voice, but he just goes, he's, he's not going to waste any time. And the first thing Laredo Kid was did, first thing Laredo Kid did was climb the top rope and start wasting time. He starts playing off to the crowd doing all this shit. But the way it came off where Raywall said, he's not wasting any time, and then he wastes like almost five seconds, I thought was fucking hilarious. We then have a backstage first class segment. Uh, prior to what was going on with Rich Swan here, um, they're clearly they're clearly trying to go first class versus ABC, and I do think the plan was to put the championship on first class. That's kind of where I, I thought they were going. I gotta apologize to you guys again. I didn't realize. I know I've been sick this weekend, but until I had a podcast here, I had no clue. How sick I actually was. How sick I actually am. So I apologize. Um, but I do think that first class was probably the plan. There's one thing I always point about this company. They don't deviate from shit. So I think 
they're still going to go to first class direction, but we could see either the uh, the dude that's been hanging out with first class, yeah, the white dude, or you know, I was told that there was there was an idea floating around of bringing another member to the group. It's someone who's who's on the roster right now. Uh, he may step into that role, to that Rich Swan role, because we don't really know what the suspension means. This company, you know, this is not a full time wrestling company. They they work a couple days, a uh, couple days a month. So is is Rich Swan suspended for two days of tapings and emergence? You know what I'm saying? So we don't really know where it's going with that. Uh, and then the talking champion, Cheeseball Mike Bailey, walks up. Jeez, yeah. Didn't we lock you in the dumpster one time? I got out. Jeez. <laughs> um, Cheeseball Fountain walks up and Mike Bailey is saying that what kind of fighting champion would I be if I didn't put the title online because Rich Swan's sitting here and he's pissed off because he thought he should have won the qualifying match so we're going to get Jeez. Cheeseball yeah. we're going to get Cheeseball next week versus Rich Swan. so I'm looking forward to that that should be that should be a good one what do we have after this? Uh, Gresham versus Patrick Dempsey. I was, I've was i never been so bored in my life, folks. There's probably many of you that were like, yo, this is up my alley. This is wrestling. Maybe it is wrestling. I had to explain this to some AEW fans the other day. Because they have the tagline, we're the best wrestle. We have the best matches. Look, WWE defined what pro wrestling was a long time ago. I understand the core of pro wrestling is the actual wrestling. But if this was pro wrestling, if this was what WWE put on, uh, we wouldn't have a pro wrestling to speak about today. There's a lot of people who say, well, I don't like the sports entertainment. And you don't have to. But WWE established that sports entertainment is pro wrestling. And they established that a long time ago. Characters and stories and drama. And the wrestling is almost secondary, tertiary. You know what I'm saying? It's like saying I watch the USFL because it's such pure football in comparison to the NFL. So... Again, some of you guys, you know, I love wrestling. I love catch wrestling. I love chain wrestling. Awesome. I've never been so bored in my life. I, I'm watching the first several minutes of this. They're playing grab ass and tickle dick. And uh, after that, I said, okay, I see where this is going. And I just started fast forwarding, fast forwarding, fast forwarding. And they're still doing the same shit. Then ultimately, Gresham forces his hand down um, and they get they get the win. Or he gets the win, which I thought was kind of a nice change of pace. We don't usually see wins like that. And then um, Patrick Dempsey got mad, and they got up, and they exchanged very fake forearms. I don't know if with, with Jonathan Gresham, if they just ditched the octopus thing, which is very possible. TNA doesn't usually, you know, just out of nowhere, whoa, this isn't working, let's stop. But it seems like that's what they did here because the gimmick was bad. The look was great. The, the vignettes leading up to it, great. The ink was not. And like I was pointing out, they had the referees wearing the mask. Like you'll see the goof ref wearing the mask, but the wrestlers are fine. Kushida was the only wrestler to actually get sick. Uh, Santino was fake sick for like half an episode. Thank God Santino was not on this episode. So I think they just abandoned it. and They're trying to find something for Gresham to do. I like Gresham. I just, I could do without these types of matches. They did a uh, very TNA on pop style Hardy's video going into the main event. I thought that was very, very good as well. They showed Joe Hendry winning the number one contenders match in the NXT. Uh, Zach Wentz. Got involved there and attacked Wes Lee. 
And um, Tom Hannafin is doing a voiceover, and he's using words like melee. Words that nobody uses. I brought it before. The only reason I knew I had heard Bedlam before was because that was a public enemy song. And the only reason I know the word melee is because there was an underground rapper on the West Coast in, uh, I guess, like early 2000s, mid-2000s, that uh, was named Melee. And that's it. Like, Tom uses these words that nobody else fucking uses. Bedlam Melee! Ah. I'm going to have more voice clips coming, and one of them will definitely be Tom Hannafin saying, Rawr. So, um, man, this is... Okay, we're going to talk Joe Hendry here for a second. I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. I don't like Joe Hendry like that. I like Joe Hendry. I've always liked Joe Hendry. But where he's gotten in popularity, like he doesn't do it for me like that. I appreciate that he, where he's at. I think he has got there on his own. I don't think TNA expected it. I don't think TNA pushed for it to happen. It's something that happened very organically, but it was more of his own doing than than TNA pushing him. Me personally, though, like if I hear the Joe Hendry music, you're not going to hear. I'm not going to like get out of my seat and pop. And I like Joe Hendry, but he doesn't do it for me like that. Not. Not like what's going on with everybody, but which is perfectly fine though. He's over with a lot of people, and hopefully he continues to be. But the way TNA is using him, <clears throat> the the showing the NXT match where he wins the number one contendership is is a good idea. It looks like it, to me, NXT has an actual plan for him to where on TNA television. Because this isn't a company that has a history of, uh, you know, making changes as they go. It's it's more of a company that's like, hey, in January we plan on being here in June, and we're gonna get there no matter what. There's not a lot of like changing on the fly. It just feels more like Joe Hendry is being shoehorned in on on TNA, like they're finding ways to insert him into other feuds and to just have him talking for no reason. Like last week when he came on to make a match, they're just finding stuff for him to do because they already had the storylines planned out. They were already like Nick Nemeth is going to win the world championship. System's going to feud with the Hardys. I don't think they had anything planned for Joe Hendry like that. So they're finding ways to, to get him involved. It just doesn't feel like they have actually have something for him. Hopefully that makes sense. I had to hit, hit pause like twice on that because of my dogs. Hopefully it makes sense. Um, it just seems like they're, they know they got to use the guy and they're finding a way to use him. But you look at what NXT is doing and they have an actual plan for him. You know, I, I worry that TNA does not have a plan and they're like really struggling to how do we capitalize off this guy? You know, how does it benefit our program? How does it benefit him? How does it benefit the relationship relationship with NXT? You know, so we will see, we will see, we will see. Um, sorry, I got two sets of notes in two totally different places. So next week we're going to get Bailey versus Swan, which I'm looking forward to that. Eddie Edwards versus Mike Santana. That should be excellent as well. Brian Myers, Myers versus Joe Hendry. That, was, that should be fine. ABC versus Cody Diener and Jake something. So I was just saying a couple se seconds ago, like they don't make a lot of changes on the fly. They put Jake something in a match versus Joe Hendry about a month ago. They booed Jake something out of the building. Joe, Jake something was already turning heel, right? You would think they would just capitalize off that and make him a big time heel. Instead, they keep him off television because they're saying, well, that's not how we were going to turn him. We're, we're not ready for it yet. He's supposed to turn on Cody Diener. So that's probably what's going to fucking happen here. Or at least we're going to get back to that storyline, you know? Uh, Hammerstone and Eric Young, the gift that keeps on giving. 
And then the Ash and Jordan, a match by Elegance. Victory Road, I, I, I thought it was crazy. They sh it's in two weeks in San Antonio. It's like, um, or two weeks later than Emergence, which is crazy. I don't even know how they're going to build that shit up. Main event was the Hardys versus JDC and Moose. Um, this was fine. I was enjoying it. Went a little long for me, so I started kind of fast forwarding. I wrote into my notes here: How are they going to force Joe Hendry into this match? Like that was. It's almost like you just know what's going to happen, and every system match ends with a fucking beatdown. I mean, every single match, especially if it's at the end of the show. TNA says we got to finish the match with melee and bedlam. That's that's their formula, so. I already know, okay, who's going to run in, who's going to jump who. And, uh, I mean, it played out exactly how I thought it would. The Hardys would win. I thought the Hardys looked good here. You know, they weren't forced into doing stuff that AEW would force them into doing. And, um, you know, they obviously won the match. They were going to win. We already knew they were going to win the match. I mean, please. And then uh, Santana runs down, Joe Andrew runs down, and they're going to set up a big four-on-four -four match, I, I believe, for Emergence. Emergence has got some tag team matches. I think they're doing a knockouts six, you know, six knockouts match. You know, this this is more of what I want to see at this TNA Plus specials. Not everyone defending the fucking titles all the time. So I'm gonna cut it there, folks. Um, thank you for for rolling with me on this. As I said, I wasn't feeling well, but I didn't realize how bad I was until I hit this record button. Um, so this is probably a little rough for you guys. I was struggling to get my points across, uh, struggling to read my notes, struggling to speak without coughing. This was this was a rough one for me. But um, but thanks for riding with me, folks. And uh, talk to you next week.